This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and exciting times here. Android P, the next version of the operating system that follows Android Oreo 8.0. So this will be Android 9.0. And no, we still don't know what P stands for, even though it's now available to install on certain devices. Praline, Pi, Popsicle, who knows? Anyway, we're going to check it out now. So Android P or Android 9.0 is the version of the operating system sooner or later all of us will be using. I say that almost tongue in cheek because a lot of phones still aren't on Oreo yet. So whether you get it as an update and, or whether you buy a new phone, sooner or later you're going to be using this version of the operating system. Now I'm using an Essential phone right here, this Essential PH1, the one and only Essential phone. And for the first time, Android P is available on several different devices in developer preview and beta mode. It used to only be Pixels and Nexus phones that got it well, but thanks to what they call Project Treble, where the low-lying operating system parts, the drivers and all that stuff that the manufacturers have to worry about, are separated from the software OS experience, it's supposed to be easier to do. Anyway, you can see a list on screen of all the devices you can put this on, which is the developer preview too, or part of the beta program. So it's not for the faint of heart and they always tell you that this is not a stable thing and all that, but this is actually the most stable developer preview I've tried out in all the versions of Android I've been doing this so far. So take a look at the home screen. So what's different here? Number one, we have built-in notch support and this is the poster child for the notch. This was the first phone to have it though. This is really more like a pimple over here. But that aside, because we will be seeing notchy phones, oh thank you so much uh, iPhone 10 for introducing that idea. Notice down here, the square home button is gone. The navigation buttons, things have changed a little bit. So we have this little dash over here instead. So this is becoming gesture based. Now, some people might say, gee, this is like iPhone 10 sort of stuff. But you know what? It's not. It really is a lot more like WebOS, which is, I don't know, every smartphone aficionado's probably favorite operating system. And that's fair. Matthias Duarte, who's actually working at Google used to be on the WebOS team back in the day. So, hey, it's fair if they do that. So multitasking, check that out. So you just swipe up like so, and you've got a carousel of apps. So that's pretty easy. It's a little bit easier, I think, to invoke said than on the iPhone 10. Also, if you're walking around, maybe you, you want to do this one handed, you can just use your thumb and you can grab over here and swipe through everything that you've been doing as well, which is a nice touch as well. And if you want to kill any app that you've got running here, it's just a delightful web OS like swipe up. And it actually really does kill the app, unlike the iPhone 10, where you have to press and hold on a little button to make it happen. Boom, it's gone. Boom, it's gone. So you can have your fun tidying up very easily there. It's just nicely done. And whatever you stop on, you can maximize as well. Tap that. That really still is functioning your home button, that little dash right there to get back home. Now do a full swipe up, and then you've got your apps over here. So there's a little muscle memory going on as to remembering that, but it's not going to take you very long. So gone is the multitasking button. Now we still have our back button there, so all is not too confusing there. So that, that part is pretty much normal. So nice touch. Now, in terms of notifications, they haven't super changed a lot here, so that's not a, a bad thing. Notifications get a little bit more intelligent. If, if it notices that you keep swiping away something, say, I keep getting the Red Sox scores, but they've been doing badly and I don't want to hear about it anymore, it'll say, do you not want to see this anymore? So that can improve notifications and make them a little less naggy. Notice here that I took a screenshot and we have the option to edit screenshots, which probably folks like me who demo phone apps all the time will find more useful than, than the rest of you, but who knows? Now that speaks to something that, you know, a lot of these things are things that manufacturers have been doing individually to customize the phone. Samsung has had editing of screenshots, particularly because it made sense with their Note phones for some time. Another feature for the shush mode or do not disturb mode is if the phone's laying face up on a table and you flip it over, it will well, go silent. So that's something that we've seen phone manufacturers do before themselves. So now people don't have to reinvent the wheel individually. There are APIs available. Likewise, now for the camera application, say you're lucky enough to have dual cameras on the back. Well, you've got APIs that support a variety of features like the bokeh mode, seamless zooming between the two cameras. So this is going to save development time for third-party app manufacturers and for the phone manufacturers themselves because they've got that built in. Another nice touch is, you know how you're, every time that you're, you start playing a video or you're about to or a game or whatever and you hit the volume button but you're actually controlling the ringtone? Well, now the default behavior is actually to control media. So you, you've got this kind of control over your ringer right here, but this is going to control your media volume by default. I think that's probably what most people want. And if you want to get to all of your sound settings, there they are individually as always. 
Do Not Disturb gets more Do Not Disturbing now, too. It, it, the idea is that your life is not supposed to be taken over by your smartphone. So if you turn on Do Not Disturb, you won't even see sleep screen notifications. The phone's not going to vibrate. You know, you'll still get your important calls. Anybody that you said is those who are allowed to come through, even when you're in Do Not Disturb mode, but the phone won't bug you. Now, suddenly, we're all obsessed with the idea that we're using our phones too much. By the way, the YouTube app is supposedly going to get an update, and it's going to let you know if you've been watching YouTube for an hour and ask you if you really should be doing this for your own mental and physical health. Yeah, I, yeah. Beyond that, they want you to use it less with more awareness, I guess. So they've got a dashboard, and you can set app timers so you don't spend more than, say, an hour a day in Facebook. It'll grayscale the app, and it'll kill it, and you'll have to go back into your settings to re-enable it again. So you're really going to have to be thoughtful if you want to re-enable it. You've got wind down. You tell it when bedtime is, and it's going to grayscale the phone and do its best to stop you from using the phone when you're supposed to be asleep. Now, I think some of you might disable this, especially if you tend to have insomnia and at 2 a.m. You know you just want to watch that cute cat video to fall asleep again, but, well, it's going to be up to you. You can control this. Now, after Android does, Google is still thinking about battery life, but they're kind of trying to make it a little bit more user-friendly for you. So when you go into settings, you see right away it's estimated battery life based on how you've been using the phone lately. You know how they always have tracked what's been using the battery, well... You still have all of these settings available to you if you're interested in it, but it takes a look at what you're doing and how you tend to set brightness, and it bases it on that. Speaking of brightness, now brightness is AI driven. What that means is, you know, you've got your auto brightness on and you've got a slider so you can set the relative brightness. Well, it, it observes how you keep changing this. If you keep doing this or this based on certain ambient light settings, then it will start doing it for you so you don't have to actually go in and fiddle with the brightness so much. So there's just a lot of nice user facing tweaks that are going on here to make this a little bit friendlier and a little bit easier to use. So that's Android P so far, and I really like what I'm seeing. I like the fact that they're finally giving the user interface an overhaul, a thought toward usability, all that sort of thing. Sure, the AI buzzwords going on and on because it's using all sorts of observational learning to try to help you do some of what you do best or maybe do less of it in the case of the app limits and all that sort of thing. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.